Hi, I'm Patrick Roberts, maker of the Rapid Resizer. Uh, this is the first tutorial video for Rapid Resizer Online. If you've just bought it or you're really curious, this will show you how to get started with resizing your designs, printing them to any size, and point out any little gotchas along the way. When you log in or whenever you click on the Resizer icon in the upper right corner, that brings you to this, the main page. You can click on the Choose File button, or it might be Browse, depending on your web browser. Click on that button, choose any picture or PDF file from your computer, and then click Resize to upload it. On the off chance that's not working, you can click on the Use Basic Uploader checkbox, and that'll hopefully solve the problem. Uh, if you don't have a design, there are a number of tools to help you make one. Stencil Maker, Picture Stencil Maker, you can draw a design if you have that version of the surface. You can scan a design. There are instructions to help you scan with whatever software you have on your computer. If you have Windows, there's a, a free scanning or you know, if you paid for the service, there's a free scanning app that you can install and that takes care of automatically pulling the design from your scanner and sending it to the service. So after you've chosen your design, you always get to this page. This is the main page for sizing your design and also gives you all the buttons to go to other steps to make other changes to it and when you're done you just come back here and then you can enter your size and print it. Uh, there's no point entering your size before you go and do these other steps just bother with the size when you're finally ready to print. Now the most important things to ensure a precise resizing is your design has to be straight and it has to be cropped. So if your design's at a bit of an angle, the size you enter isn't going to work unless it's straight. So you can click on the rotate button, that'll take you over to that step. You can turn or flip or mirror your design until it's right. And then when you're done, click on the rotate or straighten button there and that'll bring you usually to the crop step. If your design was already straight, you can just click the crop button here. Now, when you mouse over the crop button, it'll actually show an orange box that outlines the original extent of your, uh, the image of your design. Because if there's any space between the outside lines and the edge of the image, well, that'll be resized as well, and that means your printout will be smaller than you expected. So, if your design isn't already perfectly cropped, you can click on that button and slide the edges of the box to fit where the outside lines of your design are. Tightly fit them and then you can hit crop. And then that would usually by default would take you to the save ink step or if your design was already cropped you can get straight to it from here and that just has a number of options to, for example, if your design was color you can turn it into grays to save color ink and then if there's a lot of filled in areas on your design, thick lines or large dark areas, you can filter those out or outline them to save all that ink and that often also makes a more useful design. There's also uh, woodworkers sometimes like to have the design printed out in red so it's easier to see. There's an option to tint your whole design red there as well. So. Once you're sure that your design is straight and cropped and you've run it through the ink saver if you want to, there are a few other options, uh, at least the first time around, that you might want to make sure are correct. Uh, above all, the paper size has to be right or it's not going to print out properly. There's an option to have it number the pages so you can keep track when you're laying them out. You can override uh, whether the pages are printed wide or tall. By default, it will choose whichever uses the least paper, so you usually don't need to change that. You can toggle whether it puts a little border around the printed area of the page, so you know where to cut to have it all connect. And related to that is the page margin option, which is how much space there is between the edge of the paper and that border. It defaults to half an inch, because that's kind of a safe assumption, because by default a printer won't print right to the edge of the paper. Uh, if your printer supports it and you've gone into its settings to set it to borderless, then you could set the margin here to zero, but just leaving the defaults here are fine and usually the simplest thing to do. So, 
when you've got it all straight and cropped and the settings are okay, usually the defaults are fine, then finally you can enter your size. Now you can just type in any width and height. Uh, there's a little proportional option there. When that's on, for example, if you, you know, type in 20 inches and your design is square, it'll automatically keep the height as 20 inches. Uh, if you need to stretch or squeeze your design, you can just type in different widths and heights and it'll automatically turn proportional off, but you can click it back on to undo it, uh, allowing you to stretch or squeeze it. You can also resize by percentage or part, so you can click the percentage button and then it'll show what it thought the original real-world size of your design was and what percentage you want to enlarge it to. So for example, if you enlarge it 200%, it will double it. Uh, the program isn't guaranteed to have the original size of your design, so it's important to double check that number to make sure it makes sense. Like you can just take a ruler to your original design, the full extent of it, like the part that was in the image, not just the part of, say, the lines within it. Take a ruler to that, measure the width, make sure that's the same value in here. Yeah. For example, if you got your design from a scanner, ideally the scanner put the original size in and the rapid resizer tries to preserve that and use that, but there's no guarantees because once it's in the computer, it doesn't really have size anymore. You can also resize by parts. So say you just need a particular, you know, say you need a circle inside your design to be a certain diameter. If you click part, it'll bring up uh, another copy image of your design and you can draw a line across the part that you want to size by and then enter how long that line should be. So if you wanted a circle to say in your design be 10 inches, you draw a line across any diameter of the circle, type in 10, and then the rapid resizer automatically figures out how to large the overall design should be given that. So when you're done setting the size, you hit the print button. Now this actually, it takes a moment to resize your design. Technically it makes a, a PDF file of however many pages. Hmm. And then this actually shows the PDF file. Usually it just brings it up in your web browser. And that's actually sort of your real preview. This is really what's going to print. And it's a good idea to take a close look at that just to make sure that's right before you spend the ink and paper on it. There's also a couple of settings you have to, PDF print settings there that you have to make sure are right. Usually they're okay by default. It shows here below the print button what setting you should kind of make sure is set right just so that it doesn't slightly distort your design. Your computer doesn't slightly distort the design while printing it. So anyway, once you've got that real preview, none of the settings are going to goof up how it prints and it all looks right, you can finally hit the real print button there and it'll actually come out on your printer. Uh, if you have any problems, uh, the best bet is to click on the little help link in the upper right corner of every page of the site. Uh, it's best to do that do that from the page where you're having the problem because it automatically includes a lot of information about what you were trying to do. Um, also there's kind of hidden help messages throughout the site. Usually if you mouse hold your mouse over any of the buttons or any of the controls, there'll usually be a little message uh, elaborating on how that works. Also, many of the pages have built-in tours. You can click on the tour button if it doesn't start automatically, and that will kind of guide you through the major elements of the page and tell you about them. And just as a reminder, from any part of the site, if you want to get back to that main page and work on a new design, just click on that icon in the upper right, and that's how you get started on something new. So, wow, you made it to the end. Uh, if you're watching this on my site, like I said, you can just click on the corner of the upper right and get started. Uh, if you're watching somewhere else on YouTube, uh, I'd appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment or question, that would be great. And then you can go to rapidresizer.com and give it a try for yourself. Thanks for watching.